Today, I am gonna go over the very unique unfair advantage that Microsoft has over Google Gemini, as well as OpenAI's ChatGPT. Now, this is truly a unique video because there's a weird moat that they have that nobody's talking about. And I think it's gonna cause Microsoft to leap past everybody potentially if OpenAI and Google don't pay attention closely. Okay, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ryan Staley. I've been implementing solutions literally over the past three weeks. Um, have talked to hundreds of executives, have worked privately with companies to, for AI skill transformation for their team. And now what I'm gonna do is bring to you today some of the takeaways or ahas that I had along the way, specifically as I was working with Microsoft Copilot, Google Gemini, as well as ChatGPT along those areas. And I'm actually gonna show you Microsoft Copilot as well, what it's capable of literally in minutes so you have a full understanding of it. So think of it as kind of a combination of what the unique opportunity is for them and a micro tutorial about how to help handle that and advance forward, okay? So just kind of kick things off. Microsoft has 365 million, that's million, Office 365 users, okay? So it's very easy for them to upgrade into Copilot. And what it's being done is it's being integrated literally into all the Office suite of products, okay? And so why that's really critical is because it's literally embedded in the app. There's also the web browser enablement as well. And one of the barriers for ChatGPT is that it has the capability that's amazing and it actually powers Microsoft Copilot, but it's not directly integrated into Office products. Now, Google Gemini has the same thing on the basically workspace side, which I'll get into and do a different video on that probably. But the unique thing about difference between Google and Microsoft right now is that Microsoft has a commercial data protection guarantee. Now, Google's, so what that means here, let me explain what that means. What that means is your data is protected and there's the security level or protection layer, if you will, that's not covered under Google's solution. Now, there's a data guarantee or protection, but it's still being reviewed by human uh, reviewers in terms of your chat streams and all those. Microsoft identifies that it is not doing that. ChatGPT has that as well on the team side or the enterprise side. But once again, it's not integrated into the office suites of products for those different areas. That's why I think Google and Microsoft have huge competitive advantage with this once they get their go-to-market motion moving with it, okay? So let's get into it. Enough talk on my end. Let me share with you exactly what we're talking about here. And you're gonna see the opportunity with Microsoft Cola. Copilot right now. Okay. So here we are. Here's the example of the web version, if you will. And I'm going to show you a couple different things about this really quick. And there's multiple different ways to use this. But one of the things that you'll see here is this is the web browser. There's different creative, balanced, and precise. So these all have different strengths and weaknesses. Most of the time, balanced is fine. Creative is better for images and precise is better for exact details. So let's click it over to precise. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what this is. And basically I just infused a prompt that I have in a prompt library. Uh, this is one of the things that I include in my membership for those that wanna use their go-to-market or improve their go-to-market by becoming superhuman with AI. So let's just say this is a, a prompt that we can use to do research for Microsoft on Microsoft who they are organizationally, like let's look at their 10Ks or annual reports. Now, as of recording of this video, in a few days, Microsoft is about to share their most re recent earnings report. So it'll be interesting what they see on Copilot. Now, I don't know about you, but there's been a ton of actually marketing intentional effort and focus on Microsoft for this, which makes me think they'll work. Now, at the same time, basically they have 49% ownership in OpenAI. So even though they don't have controlling ownership, they have a massive basically piece of the pie there. And at the same time, they made a big investment, as you can see in Mistral, which is an open source large language model as well, or open source model, not a large language model. Now, what I'm gonna show you here is this is really interesting. So I asked it for a lot of data, basically what it happened in the annual report, what are the strategic initiatives uh, led by the CEO, as you can see, invest in Microsoft's AI by infusing it into their business, right? Uh, with across every layer of the stack. So they're going all in on it. This is their revenue and then the most recent 10K. Now, the really cool thing that I like on this is this is grounded in Bing chat. 
So what that means is it's using the large language model of OpenAI, but it's also checking these different areas. So it cites all the sources, okay? So real simple and easy way to use this. The other thing that's advantageous is you could literally take this and export it to Excel, which is where the integration starts to become really unique in terms of the Office products, okay? And so that, I'm not gonna necessarily look at that right now. We'll get into that later, but basically export that doc at the same time you have this here. And now something else that's really unique on top of it too, is as you see these different areas, you could like, dislike, export it, share, or read aloud, okay? So if I wanna export this, I could export the word PDF or text. All right, that's super critical because this is starting to bring down the barrier of what's possible when it comes to this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export it to Word. And once again, as you can see here, we already exported it to Excel. Now we're exporting it to Word. And while that's working, I am going to continue with this and we'll go back to that in a little bit. So this is the first example. The other area that you could do is you could leverage this as well in terms of basically um, a notebook. So what this notebook feature enables you to do is prompt almost like the APIs do for the different tools, which is basically the developer way of leveraging chat. Okay, so if we wanted to do something like that, this is the second unique area. And this will get into, um, let's say we wanna write an, an ad like Apple. All right, oops, little misspelling there. All right, so this busts out the prompt. This gives you an example of what it is. And so let's say, oh, let's say I want to create, this is context on what it is. Create an ad about Microsoft Copilot. Okay, so then what it'll do is it'll spit it out over here and then you could iterate on this same prompt in here and then reproduce it. So kind of a unique different example of how you could leverage this. And at the same time, as you can see here, try the app. There's a mobile app to accompany this that it will definitely try and get you to do. And so here's an example of Apple's successful taglines. Um, this is kind of like think different, you know, code made simple, your coding buddy, write less, do more coding at the speed of thought. So I think it's on the premise that it's using the GitHub Copilot because basically Copilot Pro, what I'm referring to is a little bit different. So now if you want to, you can go through this prompt and change it up a little bit differently. However, we're not gonna do that right now, okay? So um, I told you about the answers it was gonna have in Word. This was pretty cool how I exported this little area to Word and it's got all the citations, okay? Now I'm gonna get into the in-app usage for Copilot as well in a little bit, but let me finish up the web version as well because there's some really cool things within here. Now, what you're gonna see too is we've gone through these. There's um, a really, there's pretty cool things you could do more on the creative side. So what you're gonna see here is basically I use Copilot, but then what I did is I enabled a plugin and the plugin that I enabled was Suno. So Suno makes a song by typing text to prompt. So let me show you what happened. I made this song, I said, okay, this is all I gave it. I said, when you're done, create a visually, oop, no, that was the for the picture, I'm sorry. Create a song with a rap beatbox and sheer intensity of what it takes to be a global leading AI tool. Now check this out. Okay, not the best, but still pretty freaking cool for just typing in a sentence, right? You could actually have prompts that create whole entire songs, put it in there, and there's a lot of ways in business commercial application uses that you can use for it. Now, from there, what I said is, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm like, now, as you saw in this here, I said, your song is in the works. Oh, I'm sorry. When you're done, create a visually stimulating picture of the creator of the song, surround on stage by 10,000 people as he performs, okay? And then it created these four pictures, which I was really impressed with. Now, as we click on it, what you'll see is these pictures were generated, right? Now, what the awesome thing about it is too, is I gave it another prompt in there and I said, okay, now make it make him rapping. The only thing I changed is right here is the prompt. I said, make the creator of a song rapping on stage. So instead of performing, rapping. And check this out, look how cool that is, right? This is like insane. And so this was pictured, this was created, right? So some really, really cool visuals in terms of what you can create in a fast manner. And then there's other ones where you could explore ideas as well. And so it gives you examples, like, and this used to be in Bing Chat, right? Of different examples that you could have, ideas, creations. 
And then you could hover over them and it gives you the prompt of what it is, all right? And it actually explains for you how to use it as well. So uh, I wanted to walk you through that so you could see what the full kind of suite is if you look at it all the way from the web version, like what I showed you here. <clears throat> we create a new topic, you can see it here. So this is the web version. We have my little chats. And then as you can see, we did it in the notebook as well. And if you wanna iterate on that, you could do an iterate on that. And then last but not least, the really, really cool exporting feature. Now, what I'm gonna do here is, it, and, oh, by the way, we went from SON to picture uh, and to other areas. So I just exported this, but this is the really cool thing about it. So let's say I have this entire doc, right? And this is where I think the moat starts to become kind of interesting with those 365 million users that they have. So as you look at it here, we got Microsoft's annual report, the summary, all the, the background research, and it was exported here. Now, this is something cool. So if I hover over here, let's say I, I click on this doc, look at this, this little draft with Copilot pops up. Okay, so now let's say I wanted to do this um, and I wanted to draft, create a marketing brief for Microsoft, or I should say on Microsoft based on the research above, All right? And what it'll do is we'll generate that. Now that's, that's a pretty weak prompt. Usually I would have like a much more well thought out prompt detailed, right? But I wanted to give you an example of using what I would call a zero shot prompt. So zero shot prompt is basically, you're not giving it any examples. We actually, we kind of are with the previous context, but now what it's doing is it's creating a brief from the context above, which was from the annual report and from the 10K. And so this is how you could stack really good outcomes specifically with AI by layering different capabilities on top of it. And as you can see, it takes a little bit of time, but what it's doing is it's building it out. And this is how you can get really creative within docs. And I'm gonna try one other example after this, and I'm curious to see how it's gonna work. So maybe we do it and we add, and we do maybe like a tweet on it, like an example of a tweet or a bunch of tweets. So let's say stop generating. This is taking a little longer, we'll keep it. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try an example within here as well. So let me click on here. Okay, so let me do this here. I am basically in real time going through and adding different examples, which this might be a little lengthy of a prompt. So let's say for context, see above, and YouTube viewers are my audience. So that's you, please support me, right? And then separated by new tweet. Okay, so let's try this. This is something that, once again, I did not test this. Oh, my prompt is way too long. Okay, so let's take a pass on that. Anyways, note to self, you have to have a very short prompt, or not short prompt, less than 2000. I like a 3000 word prompt. So here's an example in the word. We're gonna go on to the next one because I don't want you to, to Stop watching. Okay, here's another example of how we could use Copilot within Excel. Now, this is very unique in the aspect of it because I I think I've seen kind of like okay responses with the in-app use of Excel. I think if we had a stack rickum, I would say Word is the best, then I'd probably PowerPoint and then Excel. We're gonna hit PowerPoint next just so you can see what it looks like. Now, for example, let's look at home. Let's see here. Um, okay, it's got right here, it's got the little co-pilot capability, all right, as you see. And this is what's interesting about it. I actually think one of the best things on here is not the co-pilot piece. Okay, so it says select data, data in a table, I only work this. Um, so it's very kind of like, basically, oh, this was the answer one. Okay, let's do this, let's create a new one. New, I wanna create a new one, so you'll see. Uh, it'll give me an actual example of like temporary like leverage, which is probably going to be more impactful you could, if you see that. So we'll jump straight into a clean book and it needs to operate with data. So as you can see, if you click on the copilot, they're always up in the right corner for some reason. So we click on that. 
stop asking you for feedback, Microsoft. Okay. Um, let's say try an example. So it's giving us an example. Okay. So, and then basically what it does is it gives you prompts. I've noticed when I've tried my own prompts in here, they don't work very well. So you want to use their suggestions or keep it very, very simple. Otherwise, I think it it kind of um, you know blows up the <laughs> the the mental capability. So let's do this. Let's. Uh, I love that it has show data insights. So let's just, let's see data insights. So what it's going to do is it's going to take this data and then it's going to provide an example for it. Now, once again, on the app side, it takes a little bit longer so you can have some patience with it. And once again, this is going to be the worst AI that you ever use, whether it be with them or other areas. We're in, in version one of all these different capabilities, not version one, there's multiple versions, right? But you get what I'm saying, right? It's going to continue to get better and better and better. So you have to have patience. So let's say revenue by launch date. So this is basically, we could add this here, add it to a new sheet. That's something that's really cool. Okay, so it's gonna add it to another sheet. Now, while it's doing that, one of the other things that I thought was unique is not add-ons, but let's see, I saw this before. No, it had that, okay. Okay, so basically it added launch day to sheet two, but I don't see a sheet two. So these are some of the things that I'm talking about where I don't think Excel is totally there yet. I tested it with something else earlier and it did a pretty good job. So let's move on for that. So Excel has a little work that needs to be done, all right? Let's go to PowerPoint now so we can see what, what happens in PowerPoint. Now, the thing I like about this is you can create a really quick presentation or you can create slides. So um, create a presentation about um, YouTube and AI with and how it compares to the invention of the internet. It's kind of a sucky topic, but I don't want to. I don't want to keep you waiting here. Um, basically, what we're doing is we're crafting this. So, what I've noticed with presentations, it works really good or decent for creating one presentation or a full presentation. Now, I've tried to go in there and create like do this by slide one, slide two, slide three, slide four. Um, there's some things you could do more so with like VBA code or other areas, but I don't want to get into that now. And I think there's some work that needs to be done here. But as you can see, it creates a title page. It creates, you know, some basically a pretty cool picture, I think. Right. Um, at the same time, invention of the internet, comparing YouTube, right. And then conclusion. Okay. So this is pretty basic. But for typing in a one sentence prompt, it's not bad. I think this will get better and better. So you can literally type in what you want on different slides. You could ask a question, organize it. You could have it summarized, right? So there's some good use cases for here. Uh, the other thing is if you like, you can go to designer. And so this is now, this is where it gets kind of interesting. So it's taking us to different apps and different uses or different capabilities of how to integrate these different areas together, okay? So bottom line, as you could see, and this was originally the one, I'm gonna stop sharing, so we can kind of wrap this up. But just to bring this home, I think the capabilities within the embedded capabilities, specifically with AI um, or the chat capability and Copilot on the web version and then the notebook version have some really good redeeming qualities. I love how it integrates with the visually stimulating um, basically designer, as well as creating videos, or I should say not videos, but um, audio songs through Suno. And then if you kind of move on, as we start to get into the apps, there's micro use case applications. However, Word, I think is very mature because it's simple to create that text. There's a lot more you could do with creating uh, basically in, in tables or other visual mapping, if you will, specifically within Word that I think you'll be impressed with. So to summarize it, long story short, I think this has amazing potential and opportunity. It's there on the web version side. However, there's got to be some work that's done on the in-app side. I think overall, though, as you can see, there's areas where you could ground this. You could have company GPTs. You could have it looking off of your own data at a company level. So there's many more capabilities that are much, much deeper than what we're talking about right now that you're going to see start to surface and people use more and more. And so wanted to kind of wrap this up. This is a very long video, actually, for what I typically do. But um, hope you all enjoy this and I will see you on the next video.